Hi, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, thrilled to have Brian Brooks here, an excellent follow to CZ. Uh, you know, Brian, you've, uh, you've got a new job. How is the new job? <laughs> well, it's fantastic. I mean, this is a fast paced, fast, fast growing company. And I don't think I've ever been as exhilarated in one week as I have been this week. Yeah, I bet. But I mean, you know, you kind of had your, you know, pick of anything. You were sort of top legal dog at Coinbase. You ran an agency for the federal government. So why Binance? You kind of probably could have taken any crypto job you wanted. Why did you go there? Well, look, I, I think it's pretty clear that Binance is the fastest growing uh, exchange and I would say platform company in the space in the United States. And the thing that I love doing is, is I think maybe people saw at the OCC is moving really fast in a fast execution environment. What I love about the overall Binance ecosystem and Binance US specifically is they make decisions fast, they roll out product fast, they make decisions and move forward. So I, I envision a very rapid growth rate here and there's nothing more, more fun for me than that. Yeah, and, um, and talking to some people about your hire, people say CZ might have tapped you because you know, the company needs more juice in Washington. Um, you know, is that correct? And what is your plans to sort of fix um, Binance's uh, issues in DC? Yeah, look, I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily just to fix things in Washington, but obviously the gating factor for every crypto company at the moment is whether Washington is going to make this easier or harder. And, you know, listen, I, I, th I think there were a handful of us in, uh, in the administration who did have a thesis for this. So, yes, I think I can help on that front. One of the missions for us in D.C., of course, is to show the regulators that Binance U.S. really is a separate company from Binance.com. We're run in the U.S. The focus is the U.S. market. We only serve Americans. And, uh, you know, I think there's been some misunderstandings about that. So being an evangelist for that and having a very clear strategy for governance and ownership and other things focused on this country is, is going to be a big part of the story. Yeah, and if we can just kind of geek out on the legal front for a sec, you were at the OCC, the top bank regulator. It looks like your successor seems also quite crypto friendly, but there's other agencies, including the SEC. We saw Gary Gensler testify yesterday that he's looking at crypto. So, I mean, what are the things to watch in DC? What's your first priorities? What agencies are going to cause the most trouble? Yeah, well, the, the, the issue you're going to have at the outset is kind of a cacophony of different regulators wanting a piece of this. That's, that's something that I think took a pause for the last couple of years. We had more coordination in the last two years than we had before. My sense is we're going to go back to the turf battles of, uh, of, of your. So if you look at some of the things that, uh, that Gary suggested in his testimony, it sounds like he wants legislation that would give the SEC jurisdiction over exchanges, whether they're trading securities or not. The issue there is going to be twofold, which is a, you know, I'm not saying it's a good idea or a bad idea, but he will probably have a fight on his hands with the CFTC. Because if you think about it, the CFTC statute makes very clear that cash spot markets aren't supposed to be regulated as exchanges. Um, so imposing regulation, let alone putting it at the SEC instead of the CFTC, will create some turf battles there that we need to watch. And then the other thing, uh, Jeff, that I would really look out for is SEC versus the states. So remember when I was at the OCC talking about fintech charters, you know, for non-banks, the state regulators went crazy. I would expect the same thing here, where if the federal government tries to start regulating exchanges, which is currently the business of the states under their money transmitter licenses, you're going to have the exact same turf battle between states and federal government. So it's an interesting thought, remains to be seen where it goes, but I think it's not going to be easy. Yeah, the state issue is interesting to me because New York has caused a lot of trouble in the past with its bit license, deeply unpopular. Um, and, you know, I know Wyoming's doing this innovative stuff, but the reality is people don't bank in Wyoming, so who cares? Um, so I'm curious, and you guys don't have a New York license, so what are you going to do on that front? Well, look, I mean, the first order of business for Binance US is to get all of the state licenses while state licensing is still the regime. Uh, keep in mind, you know, I mentioned a second ago, Binance US is the fastest growing exchange in this country, and that's without even being licensed in New York, Texas, and five other states. So the first order of business is to fill out that footprint. But if it turns out there's a federal licensing regime that, uh, you know, eliminates the need for all of that, we can operate everywhere with one license, that's, that's great too. But that's not the current state of play, and we need to be able to serve all 50 states. So the bid license is the path for that. We will apply. And when do you expect to have a New York license by? Well, it's one of those things where I think the process is going to probably be another six months from here. Uh, we've been in dialogue with that office for several months now, so it's not a new thing to them. I think they're very well aware of what we're doing. Uh, and so, you know, I would expect you'll see that probably close to the end of the year. Yeah, and in terms of, I mean, to what degree do you think Coinbase is going to make trouble for you in the sense that I think, 
some lawmakers already regard Binance as an Asian or Chinese entity. And, you know, we know what ge the world geopolitics of that are right now. So I think from what I'm hearing, Coinbase might try to kind of work the refs and portray you guys as a sort of, you know, untrustworthy foreign entity. Do you think it's going to play out that way? Or? Yeah, look, I, I, I hope that's not true. Um, for a whole bunch of reasons. I mean, obviously, we don't need to do anything that stokes, you know, anti-Asian bias any more than it already is in this country. And I really hope that dangerous trope doesn't take hold. I, I, I don't think that's Coinbase's style. I mean, the reason I've always respected and admired that company is that they compete on the merits. They have a great platform. They have a super easy to use interface. If they're going to win, it's going to be because of that. It's not going to be because of any trash talking of a competitor. Uh, at the same time, Jeff, you know, this whole trope about Binance US being a, you know, a Chinese company or whatever, it just isn't true. You know, we entered the market with licenses from 42 or 43 US states. We only serve the United States market. We geofence every other place. We are managed out of San Francisco. It's just not true. I understand the confusion because our founder obviously was also the founder of Binance.com. But the company's been very, very careful to respect the corporate separateness, and we'll be taking steps in the next six months to reinforce that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm going to ask you a couple of hard ones now here. Um, Michael De Castillo at Forbes did a very good article alleging that Binance US was stood up as sort of a Trojan horse to port people over to the main Binance platform and would even help them evade geoblocking and things like that. Um, what do you say about those allegations? Yeah, well, I mean, look. Obviously, I don't know what was in somebody's ideation, you know, a year or two ago when those those papers were written as an internal think piece. What I can tell you is I did a lot of diligence before coming to this uh, company. OK, I spent a lot of time talking to people very carefully about, you know, explain to me exactly what we do to geofence and show me, is there any evidence of a single American customer being ported around that to Binance.com to access, access those programs? And uh, in all of that diligence, I wasn't able to find any evidence that any of that was true. So I've been a corporate lawyer long enough to know that all kinds of companies have people that write all kinds of think pieces about all kinds of things that never come to pass. But so far as I can tell, and I've done a lot of diligence, that just never happened. No, and I think that's a fair point. And it's also a testament to someone like you, who's you know, run a US agency and is well-respected American lawyer, probably would not engage in something like that, right? Uh, absolutely. I mean, look, I'm not committing my career to this to engage in something like that. I'm committing my career to this because I actually believe that our speed to market and our product execution is going to be better than anybody else's. And we're going to win on the merits. Yeah, I, I do want to stick with that Forbes piece a little more, though. Um, the other thing that came out of that was Binance sued the journalist and Forbes. Um, and it seemed the suit was meritless. I think a lot of us in the media took that as sort of a brushback pitch, you know, be careful about reporting on Binance. So as, you know, sort of the, both a lawyer and the CEO there, you know, can we expect more of that in the future? What's your strategy going to be vis-a-vis -vis critical media? Yeah, look, I mean, generally speaking, as, as you know, Jeff, because you and I have done these things together before, I, I generally value my relationships with reporters. I try and nurture them and make sure that they see me as a trusted source of information. So generally speaking, it's not my style to go and sue journalists. You know, um, having said that, there are times when statements are made that are just patently false. And when those things happen, you know, you need to figure out ways of, of, of clarifying what the truth really is. Generally, I would prefer to ask for a retraction or to ask for a supplement to the article or, or you know, go through those normal channels. I can imagine libel is a last resort, but my view is I like engaging with the press. I like communicating with the public, and I think that's going to be our first, first approach. Yeah, that's reassuring to hear. And to be clear, I mean, Decrypt, obviously, we stand by accuracy and don't think anyone has a license to report things that aren't true. But I think it is important to have that mutual respect. Um, OK, interesting. Let's, uh, another topic people keep asking about is, where is CZ? <laughs> well, you just had CZ on, so I'll let him answer for himself. <laughs> people uh, ask me, I'll tell you, Jeff, by the way, people ask me that question every day. And on any given day, no one knows. Right, right. <laughs> But I mean, putting your corporate lawyer hat on, when people say, where is Binance's headquarters, what's your answer to that? Well, it, it, the answer is the same thing that Brian Armstrong would say if you asked him about Coinbase. He would say, we don't have a headquarters. He said that very publicly. And again, to the Asian bias issue, I find it curious that um, somehow it's OK for a Silicon Valley-based tech company to go remote first and have no headquarters. And that's celebrated as visionary. But if a company that is based in Asia says, listen, we've been in a bunch of different places and we have a distributed workforce, that is somehow evidence of a nefarious plot. All I can tell you is 
Binance US is headquartered in the Presidio in San Francisco. I sat in our offices earlier this week. We're looking at growing our suite of offices around the country to include places like DC, New York, and Miami. But where Binance.com is on any given day, I mean, look, uh, I think a lot of tech companies are going distributed for obvious reasons. Yeah, and I appreciate the direct answer about you being in San Francisco because I know in the world of crypto, you know, we we sort of uh, idolize decentralized everything. But the reality is, you still need an address. The IRS wants to know where you are. The SEC wants to know where you are. So, in the case of Binance US, the answer is your office is in San Francisco. Yeah, that 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 is the answer today. And and again, as I say, we're looking at some of the things all crypto companies are looking at in terms of. Do we want to have a presence in Miami, which has really attracted a lot of crypto talent and leaned in on the policy front? What do we need to be doing in New York, which is where the institutional business is? And I would emphasize that because Binance US's DNA ultimately is going to be heavily institutional. But at the moment, yes, our headquarters office is in San Francisco. Yeah, and speaking of Miami, I've never heard so much about Miami as I have this year. Um, but you know, the reality is, I mean, the money's in New York, the tech's in Silicon Valley. Do you think? Uh, you know, Miami's got staying power as a crypto destination? Yeah, it, it's hard to know because I think it, it depends on how we come out of COVID and frankly, if we come out of COVID. I mean, everybody moved there because Miami represented freedom. It was, it, I, I used to say to people, it was kind of like Casablanca in the movie. It was the only free place, you know, in occupied France. And um, the question is, if California comes back to life and doesn't do more tax increases and doesn't further make the regulatory state hard to operate in, you can imagine people coming back to the Bay Area. It is an amazing talent pool, or at least historically has been. But so many VCs, founders, and, and now even engineers have relocated to Florida because, again, it's, it's both open and it has a tax environment that's conducive to business. And now there's a critical mass of talent moving there. It's not 100% clear to me that the Bay Area will be what it was. So I think we need to figure out in six months what that looks like. In the meantime, I could give you names of people from Eco and Kraken and Polychain and Paradigm and other places who are all there most of the time at this point. Huh, interesting. Yeah. Well, I don't like hot weather myself, so that's why I'm kind of hoping it doesn't happen. But I think a lot of people <laughs> are saying so. Um, let's look to the future a bit. I think, and we just had a fun interview with CC, and he sort of intimated that Coinbase had kind of blazed the trail for going public in the US. Can you see Binance going public in some form in the next two years? Yeah, I, 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 the next two years sounds like an aggressive timetable to me. I do think that one of the things we need to focus on at Binance US is uh, diversifying the cap table a little bit and thinking about the role that US investors can play in helping guide us on our growth journey here. So that's kind of the first order of business is thinking through whether that's something that needs to be done. Obviously, the great thing about Coinbase is we've seen what works and what doesn't work. And I, I've always said it's kind of in some ways better to be a fast follower you know, we may be Lyft to their Uber, and uh, Lyft is not a bad place to be, as you know. But uh, but I think clearly we see what the path looks like. Yeah, and um, also, and speaking with some of the Coinbase people, they sort of tell me off the record they're disappointed that they did a somewhat conventional listing. You know, it was a direct listing, not an IPO, but it wasn't. They didn't do it on their own platform. They didn't sell Coinbase tokens. Um, and I, I think that was more the regulatory environment. But you've seen the inside of Washington. How far are we away from that where American companies can go public on the blockchain? I don't honestly think we're that far. I mean, there are real companies out there originating real <clears throat> financial assets on chain today. You know, you think of Mike Hagney's figure as an example of that. And, you know, one of the advantages that Binance US has is access to things like the Binance coin. And you can well imagine the issuance of a Binance US coin or a fork of the Binance coin that allowed us to do a token distribution as our way of putting ownership in the hands of the public. I'm not saying we would do that or that that's, that's even in a planning phase, but it's one of the advantages we have is that integrated suite of not just an exchange platform, but also our own token and our own stable coin, which would allow us to do that pretty readily. Yeah, so you've almost got the tech built. You just kind of need to get the, uh, the regulator yeah. to sign off. You think, that, I, I, you think that'll be more than two years or? Well, I, you know, I don't think it'll be two, more than two years for, for that reason. I, I don't think it would take that amount of time for, for those things to, to happen. It'll take two years because you got to understand that this company, although it is, depending on how you measure it, the second or third biggest exchange in the United States, it's a company with 100 employees. I mean, w w we are sort of like the dog that caught the car. It's insanely fast growing. The business is really enormous relative to the size of the talent that's running the company. So we first have to get our arms around hiring and scaling so that we can deal with customer support tickets and so that we can deal with 
compliance issues as we get more licenses and other things. And I don't want to, you know, you don't want to miss your window for a public offering, but you also don't want to go too soon and uh, and be premature on that. So I think we got to be really careful about how we build to meet the scale of the business. And once we're there, I think we could talk about that. Yeah, and speaking of employees, it seemed for a while that Finance US was almost just Coley, your predecessor, and very light footprint. So does this mean you're going to be hiring? And if so, who, who are you looking to hire? Well, so so let me just say, I think that the company will probably double in headcount in the next six months, and I think we'll probably 5x in headcount over the next 18 months. And, and again, that, that's a place where you can just look at Coinbase as an example. I mean, we are turning over $2.5 billion of trades a day with a 100-person headcount. Uh, we don't have a U.S.-based CISO yet. That's one of my highest priority hires. You know, we need to really invest in compliance as we scale out. Um, you know, we will eventually be launching new products on the U.S. side that don't have any kind of product management around them. So, you know, we're going to be hiring in in people, in compliance, in finance, and, and a variety of other areas. I, I would guess we will make 75 to 100 hires in the next six months. And from a sort of a you know, competitive standpoint, you know, how many is there room? How many room? Is there room for how many exchanges in the U.S.? It sounds like there might be room for Coinbase and Binance, but is it sort of a winner take all or a duopoly? Is there room for sort of ten exchanges? Well, so you know, I've said before, Jeff, that I'm not sure the way to think about it is how many exchanges do you need? Because remember, the point of what we do is crypto. So exchanges, in my judgment, are just an on ramp into the world of crypto. Once you're on ramped, you know, you shouldn't need exchanges anymore because you should be done with fiat in, in a fully mature world. So, you know, as I say, once stable coins have really won as a payment mechanism and you no longer have to go back and forth between your bank account and your crypto wallet because stable coins become the payment token inside of crypto, I'm not sure that the role of these companies is, is exchange-based. That's, that's where I think the advantage Binance US have, has is that we have in our DNA not only being a fiat exchange, we also have in our DNA things like derivatives and futures and soon an NFT platform and other things like that where you'd think of us more like a diversified platform company where we're building tokens, we're tokenizing real assets like real estate and equities, we are you know, engaged in payments through our proprietary stablecoin, et cetera. At the end of the day, there may be zero exchanges, you know, and the question is who wins as the platform? I, th I think that'll be us. Okay. Um, Brian, we're out of time. Do you want to slip in one quick last question? And it's a light one. Um, Elon Musk is going on Saturday Night Live, and everyone says he's going to talk about Doge, or hopes he will. So, you know, in 10 seconds, Dogecoin, good idea or bad idea? Uh, novelty idea. Cabbage Patch Kids. Super cool. Not necessarily a great blockchain, but a super fun thing. Do you own it? I, I, I do not. <laughs> okay, on that note, um, thanks so much for the time. Uh, Brian Brooks, CEO of Binance US.